Let's leverage a very different trigger type, and that's using speech command and control transitions to another arbor. This is a bit of a stretch for this web design, but it's a pretty common scenario when prototyping voice activated devices. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have step five, apply voice triggers. In the practice file visible on canvas. You can go ahead and keep the layers panel closed for now. And if you do want to switch over to prototype mode, so I will go ahead and do that now in the upper left hand corner. We basically have four R boards. If I give you a background scenario, the idea is that the user of my design wants to use voice search to find individual chairs. let's say within the collection. The user comes to this voice shopping page and they decide that they want to speak the search term rather than type it. So they're going to click in this field here, which brings up the overlay artboard. In that overlay our board, they're basically encouraged to hold down the spacebar, which is how you open up the microphone on a Mac or a PC these days due to security issues. So holding down the spacebar and then they can speak a comment. And I've given them a sort of answer to the question. They can either find the Shuru chair or find a proof chair. So based on that, what they ask for, the speech recognition will cause the transition to the appropriate artwork. Let's start by dragging a wire from the area. That I want the user to be able to click to bring up the overlay. So here on the voice shopping artboard, I'm going to go ahead and click in the type or speak your search term. You can click right on this small little icon to indicate that you're going to speak your search term. So I'll click to select that. I'm going to double click a second time because I want to get inside that group. You may remember actually, I'm. I will go ahead and do it. Let's open the layer panel so I can see where I've tunneled into. I'm on the actual icon for voice. With that selected, um, I will go ahead and press the drag and bring up the comment artboard. That I would like the artboard behavior to be is more like an overlay. I might as well, I can do that. I'll move this over a bit. And with that wire still selected here in the properties inspector, we'll have a tab behavior bring up 
that overlay. And the overlay happens to be the same exact size as the source artboard. So I don't need to come in and adjust in here. It will line up quite well. The destination is the comments artboard. And we'll go ahead and dissolve. I just want to sort of fade onto the screen. And I can use that easing interaction at a pretty fast duration. Now that I have that set, let's make sure I can close things out. So I will go ahead and for good measure, add a wire here. I'm clicking once, double clicking again to get inside. Let's see, we've got this group. I've defined that has no name. So group 75140 inside the comments are board. I'm just going to press and drag to bring that back. And we know that drill here, the tap behavior. You should go ahead and bring me back to that previous artboard. And I have that set. I can move on now to the voice features that I would like to go with. Now it's time to come in and define our voice comments. One of the things you want to get your head around is that many of the things that we've done may interactions that we define having an individual object level. So for example, I clip on this object, which brought up this artboard. We've clicked on tiles that brought up artboards. When you're dealing with the voice comments or speech recognition, it's at a global artboard level. So when you're defining things, we want you want to define it at the artboard level. What that means is that I'll come here onto the canvas and I'll going to click on the title comments to make sure I select the comments artboard. With it selected now, so the whole artboard is highlighted in blue. I want to click and release. So I'm going to press and drag I'll click and release on the arrow here towards the right. When I do that, here is the properties inspector. Under trigger, I'm going to define that I want voice to be my trigger type. Next up, I can define what command I want user to say. To cause my interaction to occur. Now it's kind of fine reading here, but it says, for example, fine suru chair or fine poof chair. So I'll go ahead and define those two options. The comment would be find Suru chair. And I will go ahead and check some of the other settings here. 
I don't want to the actions to be an overlay. I actually want it to transition. And I want to make sure that the destination is the cheer voice shuru. So I will look for it in my drop down list here under destination. It's there towards the bottom, so cheer voice shuru. Now I want to come in and add my second comment. And I have a couple ways that I can do that. I could come here on the design canvas, click again to add a second wire. The second wire is basically going to feed down here to cheer voice poof. Instead of clicking that plus sign, I'll come here in the properties inspector and the vo notice under interaction, there's a plus sign on the right hand side. Remember how we talk about the scenario where you might have 50 artboards with 50 chairs and allow your user to basically call up any of those using a speech trigger. That can be really complicated. So you have the choice of defining interactions and defining destination artboards. Directly here in the properties in inspector. If you don't want to continue, having to drag it on the design canvas. So here is the properties inspector with the artboard still selected. On the right hand side, I'm going to click the plus sign. Notice in the drop down, I have the ability to define voice. I can come in and add my speech comment. So we'll add that one. It's fine poof chair. And the behavior again is going to be a transition. This time we'll go to poof our board in the list. And I will have the same behavior where it dissolves. Easing in and out for 0.2 second. Let's see, we always want to get back home once we've done this. So let's just build into this prototype for testing purposes. the ability to navigate back to that first artboard. For that, I will come to the chair voice through root and I will click on. Let's say I will just click on the word Altura. So I will going to click on the logo Altura here in the layers panel. It's nested here just below logo. I'll press and drag to have that behavior take me back to the first artboard. And this time I'm going to tap gesture that is going to transition. The destination is going to be the voice shopping. That's right. Dissolve is good. Easing is good. Speed is good. Let's do that one more time. 
We know that cool trick of copying and pasting appearance, but we'll do it manually for now. So I will come on in and click on the Altura logo. So click once to the group, double click to nest inside. One more time, so I have just the word Altura. Press and drag to that first artboard. Again, all the default settings are just fine. Let's go see how well we did. We're going to click on the first artboard in the sequence and bring up that desktop preview. Here, I have that first artboard. User are coming along. And in theory, they could click on any one of these to desk transition. But they're feeling a bit lazy. Would like to do it using a speech trigger. Ultra, for that, they will come on the icon here, indicating speech. I have this nice overlay behavior with the background tint that I've defined that indicate to the user what the capabilities are here. So I could always close out and go back if I don't like where I am. I honestly can also click off here and it will transition me back because this is an overlay artboard. Down towards the bottom, I get an instruction here saying that if I hold down the space bar and speed into, in this case, my Macintosh, that the prototype is going to recognize what I'm saying and understand how to transition. Fingers crossed, let's give it a go. Find Shuru chair, perfect. That works well. I wanna go back now to the root so I We'll come back up to our little secret Ultra logo will take me back. Let's try this one more time. Click on my voice search field, find poof chair. Perfect, just what I wanted. Once again, I'll come back up and click on the Altura logo to go back to the root. Well, that wraps up the Get Started with Adobe XD Prototype Tutorial.